Okay, so today I'm going to draw a portrait, and I'm going to be using um, a technique that I learned a long time ago, and that is to get my own photography first of all, or have a friend donate, which is um, this is a friend of mine, and donated this photograph for this exercise. So you go file place to begin. You locate your image, file place. Locate the image, you're going to place it onto the initial layer. You will double click, you're going to name this layer um, image, and then you're going to go and click on that locked so that this is not going to be an image that can be moved or manipulated if you notice the pencil with the slash in it. And that's what we want. We don't want this to be shifting around on us. Then what I did after this is I got the um, photograph, I printed it out, and on the back of that printout, I heavily laid on graphite in a solid blanket on the back of this printout of the picture. And then I laid it down on a new piece of paper and taped it down and proceeded to trace this image of my friend. And what I did with it is I'm making sure to indicate the areas of value that are white, 50% gray, and black, or you know, roughly thereabouts. So once I've got this template that's created, it's an easy thing to go ahead and lock this as well. And then I created this new layer called Silhouette because the way I like to begin is I like to work from dark to light. Um, so I'm on the Silhouette layer. I'm gonna get the pen tool up here, but before I do that, I always click on the white arrow prior to the pen tool, which facilitates speed with production. So if I hit the Command key, it takes you to the last tool that I had prior, which is the Direct Selection tool. So. I'm on the pen tool, command spacebar, zoom in. Something you should all know about, if you're trying to zoom in and you've got preview popping up and disrupting your flow, you go to System Preferences under the Apple. You're going to go over to Spotlight, and you're going to dis disable the keyboard shortcuts, which are up here. And if you notice, they're the same keyboard shortcuts for zooming in and zooming out. So these often get in the way, so I go and I deselect these so that they look as they do now, and then call it a day. And that allows me to hit the command space bar in Adobe and Mac, sorry, in Macintosh, and I can go and zoom in and zoom out. If I hit command option space bar, or I'm sorry, command option space bar, correct, I can zoom away. I can also go command plus or negative, or I can hit command zero to center up the artboard. So let's get started. My pen tool. I'm going to just start up here. And remember, the way I like to, do, to draw is I always have to have two anchor points per, or two handles per anchor point click. Get rid of my fill so that I can see what I'm doing. Black is not going to do that well for me to be able to see. So I'm going to go and um, I'm going to just get rid of the black. I don't need it. I have this green highlight. Command spacebar and proceed. Click and drag, option key, because there's a slight change of direction. Click and drag, option key, come and pull it back. Click and drag, option key, pull it back. Click and drag, option key, pull the handle back. And notice I'm going short handles if I don't have a long directional curve. Don't need long handles. Click and drag, oops, missed the option key. Click and drag here, beginning of a curve end of a curve, beginning of this curve, end of this curve will be right here, beginning of this curve, end of this curve will be right here, option key, and I'm just going to go and make a design decision. My artistic license is firmly in place. Zoom away so I can see what I'm drawing. Okay, this is top of the shoulder. Click and drag, command space bar. The handle's a bit long, command key. So I get the direct selection tool, the white arrow, and notice I'm shortening one handle. I'm not converting the handle. I don't want you hitting that option key unless you're making a corner point. So like right now, click and drag. This is where an option key comes into play. Click and drag, option key. Click and drag, option key shift, pull the handle down, space bar to get the hand tool. Now, I'm going to come down and crop across the bottom here. So the handles drop straight down due to the uh, shift key. So I'm vertical. That's 90 degree angle. Click and drag. Option key. Pull it up to 90 degrees. Come all the way over here. Shift key. Click and drag. Option key while I still hold the click and 
the shift key. Beginning of a curve, end of a curve, option key. Click and drag, option key. And I'm going to go and draw This is Matthew. I'm going to go draw the rest of Matthew. And again, click and drag. You guys should be able to anticipate, based on the exercises we've done in class, where the next click is going to happen because there's definitely a formula to the drawing technique. Beginning of a curve, end of a curve, click and drag option key. Click and drag option key, click and drag option key, because these are corner points. Abrupt changes in direction. And again, it doesn't have to be exact. In fact, I like to go a little bit further away with my hair. And um, I like to get a little bit extra wave in there, that's fine. This is all just a departure point. It's not set in stone. And then I can go and click on my black. But I want it to be a black fill, so I'll drag the black stroke over the fill area, get rid of this stroke. And at this point, I want to go and double check. Am I in CMYK mode? Because this is going to be printed. I am in CMYK mode. File, document color mode, CMYK. That's good news. Now over here, the color bar, which is the palette. I'll go over here to the top right. I'll show my options. And this is a grayscale black. And what that means is, if I go and I try to do a gradation, um, no, that's not necessarily true. It just means that if I'm going to go and do other colors that are in this document, and I try to um, get them to all jive with each other, the unity, which is the principle of design that's going to be compromised is unity, because black will print out as a matte black, a flat black, a grayish, warm kind of a black, instead of a deep, rich blue, or you know, a rich black, which has got all four colors incorporated to make it blend properly with other colors and to take on a little bit of the shine. So I'm going to show my options right here under, I need to go to my color, right here. And I'm going to go, you know, people have their different things, their different percentages. Um, my wife was an art director for a long time. She says 30, 30, 30, 100. I used to do 50s and 100. Other people I've seen flood them all out. But don't forget that your saturation, if it gets too much saturation, you're going to get a muddy color. You're going to get ink that sits on the top of the paper, and it's just super saturated. You don't want to do that. So to illustrate the difference between this rich black and this, which I'm going to go and revert back to grayscale black, is pretty much illustrated when I do a gradation. So I'm going to do a linear gradation and on the white I'm going to double click and go and grab a CMYK red. Okay, and then on this one I'm going to go and let's see, I need to get the same red. So what I'll do is I'm going to grab this letter I to eyedropper and then I will just change this black right here to a CMYK 30, 30, 30, 100. Now look at the gradation, how it's different. This is slate. It's kind of sooty, dirty, charcoal. See how this is getting to become a little bit more um, deeper in chroma? Saturation. So look at the gradation between here and here. Okay, much better. You want to go and make it more blue affected? You can do that. You can do a little bit more magenta. Okay, you can see completely. And this again will turn out to be a real flat color and this will shine. And so that's problematic. So rich black, 30, 30, 30, 100 on your CMYK measure. Shift click on these, delete, command zero. Let's see how the silhouette looks. So far, so good. Lock in this. New layer, putting the eye out of the silhouette, putting the eye back on layer four. And I'm going to proceed to, let's see, let's draw his hair. And again, you guys should know by now that we did the pathfinding on the 
other projects that we've worked on so far, these exercises, and that's going to allocate, or that's going to give us the knowledge that we need to be able to work quickly in production style to go again and uh, use that knowledge so that we can get this done quickly. And I'm going to fudge this a little bit. Oh, my mistake. No fill. Okay, uh, let's go across. I'm just going to make this all one shape. I can go and modify it after the fact. And I don't want him to look like he's got, you know, real sharp, crispy hair. A little wave is okay. And we come down here. Come out here and then go and close it around. And I'll show this, unlock it. I'm going to copy and paste Command C, Command F, letter V. Go and grab this top shape. And shift click. Madison Clark, please report to activity. Madison Clark, please report to activity. I want the overlap to happen, so I'm going to click on that. And there we go. And for this, I'm going to go and uh, again do this, ballpark it, and hit the shift key and make it a gray. And so this is how it's coming so far. Okay? And what you're going to do is you're going to end up going and completing the entire thing. What's happened here? It's deleted. Okay, we'll resume this. Can't see what I'm doing, so I gotta go get rid of that. And this is the hair meeting the forehead, so I'm gonna give this a jagged approach, and this is gonna reflect um, kind of the approach that people that do linoleum or woodcuts do, printmaking, because I'm making static gradations with this kind of an approach. Because you get a lot of color in this area, and then as it tapers to a point, it goes from black and transitions to white in a static fashion. So that's good. Okay, there we go. Letter I. Let's check on this for the gratification that derive, you derive from it. So I'm starting to get some nice hair going. Okay, let's go draw the flesh tone here. Now, because I have some of these pieces, I just really need to worry about getting this right over here for the most part. Get rid of the fill, not fooling myself. And you can check the picture too. That's about right. Okay, go back to the drawing. Because again, my drawing is easier to see, it's simpler, it's planned out. There's not as many bits of information that can cause you to take a lot of time. And maybe sometimes what I've seen is that my drawing has the same degree of finish 
But other people, when they trace directly from photographs, maybe just haven't had enough experience yet. And what they end up doing is they end up drawing one area that's super detailed, and then the rest suffers. And they have a, you know, it's a, a lack of continuity because of that. Coming all the way over here, I think. Let's go take a look at my picture again. Okay, close but no cigar. So this needs to come up down here. And I'll be able to cover that with the discs that are going to be indicated for that lens cap in a minute, or the lens, not a cap. And again, I'm going to come over here. And this is going to be his forehead for color. And I'm using this area up in here as sort of a mask. Okay, and then I'm going to come down here. Great. Happy with that. Sample the photograph. Say OK to that. So now I'm going to go over here and create these so that I can just easily access them. This needs to be on the top, Command X, Command F. OK, so you can see how Matthew's coming along. I think this needs to be, well, that's the shade transitioning from the black. So I've got the color over here. I don't need to heat, see it filled anymore, so it helps get rid of this. Let's go get these other values. So command Y so I can see. Oh, overlapped. Undo, 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 undo. And again, my Pathfinder is going to save the day. Because now Command Y, I can go letter V, get the black arrow, grab this piece right here, Command C, Command F it, Shift key on that, Option, or don't need to hit the Option key, just click on this. And now I can go Command Y, here's Matthew's forehead, I'm going to use a lighter value now. So letter I, sample this. And I think I'm going to hit the shift key on this one. Oh, wrong. Okay. So I need this value to be over here. Okay, so I've got these three grays that I'm utilizing right now. Am I using this one, however? Yes. Okay, that one's darker. I wonder how that would look. Yeah, I think I'm going to stay with the two grays at this point. I'll lose this one. Delete. Okay. Uh, let's see if I can get some highlights on Matthew's hair, and then maybe in my collar. Okay. Okay, I don't have any highlights on Matthew's hair at this point, but... Let's go and double check my image. Okay, so he's got the light hair going throughout. So, pen tool, uh, letter P. Hair goes right here around the finger and then in. Okay. Letter P, new tool, or new layer. Okay, because I have my Shape's already drawn. It's going to be an easy thing for me to just go in and to do this. Okay, big, not very sophisticated shape. <laughs> okay, so then I go and show these pieces. So that big piece is going to help me with this pink piece up here, with this piece that's on layer 5. So Command C, Command F, 
and that's going to help to define some shape. So let's see. This one. And I want this. I don't want these two. Command Shift G is the ungroup key. Click. Oops. Okay, I can grab this and delete. This one, however, I cannot. So my pen tool is going to come and save the day. Get rid of this anchor point. Click on that anchor point. And that's sufficient, I think. Okay, let's see how Matthew's hair is looking now. Okay, so Command C, Command F on this. Move that up here. Lock it. Get the eyes out of these. And Shift click. Leave the overlap. Go back to this and let's go sample that color. And let's move it back behind. Oh, it was locked. It couldn't do it. Right click, arrange, send to the back. Okay, so you can see how Matthew's hair is coming. Um, I think this should be a higher value. So again, I can start off with three values, but I can always choose to go further. Okay, and this, I'm going to make it more subtle. And so you can see how Matthew's hair is coming out. It's working out pretty well. That's the hardest part, I think. Um, so I'm going to leave this to you guys to go ahead. And again, if you're going to make a lighter value of this color, and say you want to keep unity, so I go grab this color, I'll give it this. Go up to this, hit my shift key, and heighten the value. That way this color is still derivative of this. It's just more white added to it, which is what? It's a tip. A, a tip. It's not a tip. It's a tint. This, if I add more black to it, shift key, I add more black to it, that's a shade. I dropper, shift click a little bit. Okay, I dropper. Shift. Okay. And so all these colors are still derivative of this gray. So that's how you attain unity. Now I think you guys see where this is going. I'm going to leave you guys to it. And I'll be around and ask me for any help that you guys might need. Any questions, okay?